Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Denmark Aranas, a postgraduate medical intern. I basically provide informative videos to medical students. And also, I would like to give aspiring Filipino physicians an idea of what a med student usually tackle in med school. If you find these videos helpful, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to be updated for my new videos that I'll be uploading every week. For today, I'll be discussing the clinical pathology correlation of chronic kidney disease. This is a slow and progressive loss of kidney function that may occur over a period of several years. And eventually, a person will develop permanent kidney failure. Chronic kidney disease is also known as chronic renal failure, chronic renal disease, or chronic kidney failure. And it is often undetected and undiagnosed until the disease is well advanced. So it's very important for us to understand this disease so that we may be able to prevent the progression of this disease. I would like to shout out to Christine Saak for helping me in creating this CPC. We'll be discussing each of these sections one by one. Let's start. The risk factors for chronic kidney disease would be an advanced age and chronic NSAID use, chronic alcoholism, and chronic smoking. All of this would predispose the kidney to a lot of damage. And as for the chronic NSAID use, it would inhibit renal prost prostaglandin production. And for chronic alcoholism and chronic smoking combined, they would decrease the urinary flow and increase the serum cadmium. And also, it would, it would increase the purine count and increase the precipitates. This now would lead to increased or excessive supersaturation of salts. As for the chronic NSAID use, the, the uh, inhibition of prostaglandin production would limit the renal afferent vasodilation. From the excessive um, salt saturation, it would lead to crystal formation, okay? And if this would continues, uh, continuously occur, the, there would be aggregation of crystals. And uh, as it progress, it would increase in size. And it would lead to nephrolithiasis, okay? The presence of two stones in the kidneys. And that would now cause an increase in renal blood flow and hyperfiltration. Uh, this now is related to uh, structural damage, uh, specifically parenchymal injury. And the chronic NSAID use would also contribute to this damage. And also it would decrease in the glomerular filtration rate. Okay. As for the structural damage, there would also uh, damage in the peritubular capillary lining cells in the kidney. Thus, there would be a decreased uh, production of erythropoietin, and that would lead to a decreased stimulation of the bone marrow. Uh, therefore, there would be a uh, fewer or lesser production of red blood cells. That now would lead to anemia, and this would be manifested as sallow skin, pale palpebral conjunctiva, pale nail beds, and palms. As for the decrease in glomerular filtration rate, that would increase the serum urea and the creatinine, and it could lead to uremic syndrome. And this would be manifested by the patient as body weakness, anorexia, ectomorph body type, and scaphoid abdomen. I would like to cite now my reference, the 28th edition, Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine. And I'll be ending this presentation by leaving you this message. Just like flowers. Make sure 
your reason and purpose for living is to bring happiness into this world. Thank you for listening and have a good day.